<laughs> is this small enough? I met Andy Warhol through a mutual friend, a writer, Dobson Rader, and um, I, I, what was it, like 1975 or something, or 74? It was, uh, Warhol was having a kind of quasi retrospective at the Whitney Museum in New York City, and he was introduced to me at this exhibition called Step On It, and um, it was this idea of putting all my photographs on the floor, and it was this idea to manipulate the viewer. I was hoping that Andy would come, but I guess to sort of show his boss he didn't show up, but Bob Colicello from the editor of Interview Magazine did come, and he said, he told Andy this is how cool the idea was, and he said, oh, why don't you come to the factory, which is the invitation that I would prefer, rather than come to a nightclub, and that set the tone for the rest of my 10-year relationship and friendship with Warhol, is that uh, I wasn't a secret fan, I wasn't a fan, I was a friend, we were both friends, it was quite an equal relationship. No, I didn't. I mean, when you're in the middle of a s snowstorm, you, you don't realize that you're in a snowstorm, you're just, you're just uh, protecting yourself from the wind and the weather and everything. And so in my case, uh, I was there with, uh, you know, I was, I became part of the factory, and it was just, it was like my home, you know, it's like when you go to your office or when you work on a project for that Shanghai and you go to the office, that's your world. And so for me, that was my world, the factory, which was the AKA the office. It was a trip that wasn't really a China trip, it was a Hong Kong trip. It was always a Hong Kong trip. But Alfred Su, who was the editor, not the editor, he was a business entrepreneur, and he had a club called the iClub, and he invited me. He commissioned these portraits of Prince Charles and Lady Di, and he put the portraits up on the wall to, for the opening of this club. And um, after the opening and the success of the opening of the club, he said, you know, I've organized this trip to uh, Beijing, and um, um, that's how it happened. And much to all of our surprise, suddenly we find ourselves on an air, in the first class section of Air China. And even more so amazing because it was unexpected. And so everything was fresh, new, and quite startling. And not to dismiss any of the photography uh, that you know I have in my book or anything, but uh, it never be, it be, we went, it didn't become a book in like t until 2000 and, Nine, I guess, um, which means that's a lot of years from 1982 when we came. It's sort of like wine. When it is time to pick the grapes, somebody will tell you, and then you make the wine then. So uh, in this case, Robert Brunel, from as a publisher in Beijing, owns a place, uh, publishing company called Time Zone. Said, let's do this book, and we did that the book about China uh, just before the Olympics. And so I think it was a wonderful time to do that. My last question is uh, obviously, I'm going to cut the, the picture in which one is your favorite, which one is the most expressive, or uh, what, what you, I know it's difficult probably to choose, but of the China series, of the China series, yeah. 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 What is my most favorite picture of, of Andy? Uh, yeah, yeah. I have to say, uh, the picture right behind you. Which is Andy? No, it's right here. Uh, Andy's in Tai Chi. Oh, I like these things. What are they? 
Those are cool. I love those. Those are definitely one. You could put this one at this end, but that would be the other one. one. It, uh, James is Who? Oh. Who bought that? James. Okay. It's He's going to find out that this guy's buying. When did I start hassling? You are. Uh, at least two years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. At least two years ago. And, um,. I think I told you, usually there's a guy at the studio who usually screens calls or emails or stuff. And uh, a lot of them get through, and I kind of look at them and what's this? And I kept seeing your thing, and I thought, you know, well, what's this all about? And I didn't really pay attention to it. I actually have a story that I didn't tell you Go about. On. Time the same it. thing, actually. Okay. Um, this woman, uh, her name is Marie um, uh, Caruso Cabrera. Um, and she does this thing for CNBC, Asia Talk, and she reports on financial things. Uh, Michelle Carissa Cabrera, she's quite famous in the scene. If you go look her up, she's really famous. Okay. And so she, uh, her producer produces segments, and when they did this big thing uh, at Sotheby's or Christie's in Hong Kong, the big Warhol auction, she saw all these, the big thing, and her, her producers called up several times to do an interview with me for CNBC, financial thing. Yeah. And uh, of course, when I saw the message of the call, I paid no attention to it again. I thought, what is CNBC financial people calling me up for? It must be a mistake. So some time passes, and the phone rings, and I answer it, and of course, it's Michelle herself. So she says, you know, we've been trying to get a hold of you. Would you be interested in doing this? And I answered when she said CNBC. I said, are you, real, are you serious? You're like, oh, I'm an artist. What is the, the you know, the financial world? And so um, I finally agreed to it. It's such a similar story to your thing. And, of course, uh, the payoff was the same thing. I was on CNBC Financial, which is really big. It was like a three-minute spot. It was seen all over the world. And we have since stayed friends and she's on the NBC nightly I mean she's a big uh, uh, shot uh, uh, you know uh, what I mean uh, uh. and I paid no attention to her because she's she's so cool and um, I adore her and we've been friends ever since and it's the same story with you yeah. I, uh, you've come through in the same way that um, I guess there's some sort of lesson I should learn from all this I should pay more attention but well but when you get this eighth email then you're like okay this person means business yeah yeah <laughs> So what happened, Nikki? I saw the book in um, in Key Club about, I guess, just after it came out, probably about 2009. Right. The beautiful uh, uh, Warhol in China '82 book um, that Christopher made with all his photos, and I thought, what a story! Basically, I want this story. So I emailed Christopher, and he actually emailed back. I think one time and said, "Yeah, I'll do the story." And I said, "Great." Should we want to do a phone interview or email interview? And how do I get the photos? And I just had nothing. But Silent. Every, when was this? This is probably about 2009, I think. Maybe, two, maybe 2010. That long ago. Wow. It took I can check. I'll can check through the set. And then. Yeah, um, wow, so then I just kept emailing every three months, saying, so "I'm still fast, here. I'm still <laughs> here. Uh, I still want to do this." And then finally, I said, "You know, we'd, we've got Beijing. We can do it in Beijing, Shanghai, and and PRD, Guangzhou, and." Um, and then I went out for dinner that night and I got a phone call. Chris was saying, um, yeah, I'll do the interview, but also I want to come out to Shanghai. So I said, yeah, yeah, of course, no problem. That, that'd be easy to arrange. <laughs> the yeah. queue, four months of chaos. Yeah. But we've been on the phone like every week, putting it together. And now and, and it's I'm opening now. night tonight. Yeah. And uh, we've had some fun this week already. We've had an amazing time this week. At the beginning of my career, I always wanted to get my work out. And I, I had also learned this lesson from Warhol that, you know, it's about getting people to see the work. And, I mean, I, at the very beginning of my career, I would show my photographs in beauty parlors yeah. or in laundromats. I mean, I, you know, I didn't show them in restaurants usually because people are too busy eating. Yeah. So I didn't show them there. But generally, I would show them almost anywhere. Yeah. And... So, hearkening back to that philosophy, when you said the wine bar and I looked at the pictures, I thought, well, let's see what happens. Yeah. And um, every part of this story 
the Ned Kelly story, the that Shanghai story, has been more than I expected, which is so much fun, because usually things don't meet your expectations. They're usually either there or below, and this has exceeded my expectations, so um, needless to say, I'm really happy. He's not here now, he's coming later. <laughs> oh my god, look at you. That's like oh, pimped up. Full on, isn't it? So this one is like your memory. This is only for like a crazy. I like this. Excuse, is this crazy enough, Ned? Ned is crazy. this for tonight or? No, no, I'm not. He's the star tonight. What can I tell you? This is for when I'm emceeing, you know. In fact, I need to take the picture of Sheila. Thank you. Don't tell me you're gonna go for the pink one too. Yeah, man. Oh, look at this. Oh my god, baby blue. I mean, really, this is over the top. Yeah, These no. are over the top. I think I must have been a bit drunk for the night before when we came in. <laughs> man, listen. This is so pimped out. Are you kidding? That's amazing. What do you think about the white buttons? Oh, uh, yeah. This case is very clear because the pink color of her. Okay. All right. Um, I think you should wear that tonight. Oh, but you No, no, no. You're the star tonight. Well, yeah, no, you're our pimp star. <laughs> yep, you're pimping me out. I think you should wear something like this. Why not? Well, Th this is for a date night. That is that. so pimped this out. Is for a date night. <laughs> This is pimped out. <laughs> I, really, really, don't be afraid of that. Everybody has zippers. Nobody does this anymore. What who did? So he okay, he did. 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 He just like grandma. Just like grandma. <laughs> <Pajamas. laughs> they look like grandmother's pajamas, don't they? A little bit like. <laughs> they look like grandma, don't they? A little bit? That was just wonderful.